Second Chronicles, Second Chronicles, Chapter Eighteen. I'm going to read quickly, Second Chronicles eighteen eight through twenty seven, and then verse thirty four. Then the king of Israel called an officer and said, Bring quickly Micaiah, Emma's son. Now the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, were sitting each on his throne, arrayed in their robes, and they were sitting at the threshing floor at the entrance of the gate of Samaria, and all the prophets were prophesying before them. Zedekiah, the son of Chaniah, made horns of iron for himself and said, Thus says the Lord, With these you shall gore the Arameans until they are consumed. All the prophets were prophesying, thus saying, Go up to Ramoth Gilead and succeed, for the Lord will give it into the hand of the king. Then the messenger who went to summon Micaiah spoke to him, saying, Behold, the words of the prophets are uniformly favorable to the king. So please let your word be like one of them and speak favorably. But Micaiah said, As the Lord lives, what my God says, that I will speak. When he came to the king, the king said to him, Micaiah, shall we go to Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall we refrain? He said, Go up and succeed, for they will be given into your hand. Then the king said to him, how many times must I adjure you to speak to me nothing but the truth in the name of the Lord? So he said, I saw all Israel scattered on the mountains like sheep which have no shepherd. And the Lord said, These have no master. Let each of them return to his house in peace. Then the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, Did I not tell you that he would not prophesy good concerning me, but evil? Micaiah said, Therefore, hear the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne and all the host of heaven standing on his right and on his left. The Lord said, Who will entice Ahab, the king of Israel, to go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? And one said this while another said that. Then a spirit came forward and stood before the Lord and said, I will entice him. And the Lord said to him, How? He said, I will go and be a deceiving spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. Then he said, you are to entice him and prevail also. Go and do so. Now therefore, behold, the Lord has put a deceiving spirit in the mouth of these your prophets, for the Lord has proclaimed disaster against you. Then Zedekiah the son of Chanana came near and struck Micaiah on the cheek and said, How did the Spirit of the Lord pass from me to speak to you? Micaiah said, Behold, you will see on that day when you enter an inner room to hide yourself. Then the king of Israel said, Take Micaiah and return him to Ammon, the governor of the city, and Joash, the king's son, and say, Thus says the king, Put this man in prison and feed him sparingly with bread and water until I return safely. Micaiah said, If you indeed return safely, the Lord has not spoken by me. And he said, Listen, all ye people. And then verse 34, The battle raged that day, and the king of Israel propped himself up in his chariot in front of the Arameans until the evening and at sunset, he died. I spent the last three days reading a book called Strange Fire. New book that just came out. I would encourage you to read this book. Strange Fire. It defines and illustrates the rampant deception 
that is a part primarily of the Pentecostal and the charismatic movements, not only in this nation now, but that has spread around the world and it traces the roots of those movements historically up until the present current age. And let me say to you that the deception in these days are not only in the Pentecostal and charismatic movements, but much of it has moved right over into mainstream denominations, even some amongst Baptist folks. I have witnessed in what been nine years that Miss Dean and I have been in this church, I have witnessed individual people who have been led astray by voices. By intuition. Listening to spirits. Lying spirits. Deceptive, seducing spirits. Spirits who are very, very talented at imitating and making people believe that they are of God. And they are leading multitudes. They are literally leading millions astray around the world today. Exactly. Deception marks the age that you and I are living in. An adulterous age. A wicked age. And we find it everywhere that we look. It is spread throughout the world and the United States is no exception. Matter of fact, we're now leading the way in deception. You and I are living in an age in this nation, in this country, and I will say to you that we live under one of the most deceptive governments this nation has ever had. Amen. We have a habitual, you won't hear this many pulpits, but we have a habitual pathological liar sitting in the highest office of this man. Say, so how can you say that? I know what I'm talking about, folks. The entire world is now caught up in deceptive lies. The church is not exempt from deception. Lying is associated with the fallen nature of man. Jesus defined Satan, the prince of the air, the prince of darkness. Jesus defined him as the father of lies. And when you combine the fallen, lying nature of man with demonic deception and lying to spirits. Folks, you have a problem. Religion has become an arena of deception. Lying spirits run rampant throughout our world and lying spirits are running rampant through much of the professing church. 
I was once caught up in deception, folks. I've seen it. I've heard it. I've practiced it. I have witnessed great deception among those who claim to be men of God. And I would say to you that most, pay close attention to my words, I said most, I'm not saying all, but I am saying most of what you see and hear on so-called Christian TV today is deceptive lies. I've heard men stand in pulpits and say some of the most outrageous things you've ever heard in your life. And you say, my God, anybody would tell something like that can't be lying. Making outrageous claims. Telling stories that are obviously lies. Lying spirits now dominate Christian airwaves in America. You say, preacher, how do you know that? I know it because I've spent 33 years now saturating and bathing myself in this book. That's how I know. Lying spirits are nothing new. Lying spirits go all the way back to the Garden of Eden when that lion serpent wiggled its way up and got in Eve's face. When the father of lies himself lied to Eve, she took the bait. She believed the lie. And that first lie has affected and impacted everybody who had been born since that lie was believed. You know Satan is still throwing that lie up in folks' face and folks are still taking bait. Even multitudes in the professing church. You want to get a man's attention, tell him he can be God. Man is still believing that age old lie, folks. Sometimes he puts it in different words, he changes things around, but the message is the same. The why is the same. Multitudes are being led astray. Lying men are manipulated and controlled by lying spirits. Just as God uses His people in dispensing truth, Satan uses His people to dispense lies. Somebody should create a Hollywood program. They could probably get rich off of it. And what they should title it is, Lies Gone Wild. Yeah. All right, for the sweet ladies on the front row taking notes, I want you to leave here understanding this. Man is going to believe the lie or he is going to believe the truth. Amen. The broad way is the way of the lie. The narrow way 
is the way of truth. Man is going to believe the lie or he is going to believe the truth. And the first thing I want you to see here is that lies promise and offer fallen man what he wants to hear. Lies promise and offer fallen man what he wants to hear. Now in our text, Jehoshaphat and Ahab, they had united and they were going into battle together. I want you to understand, folks, that life is a battle. And they decided that they were going to seek some spiritual counsel. Of course, Ahab, we know that he's one of the most wicked kings who ever lived. So Ahab, he turned to the false prophets of Baal. False prophets of Baal in turn, what did they do? They lied to Ahab. They canceled him with a favorable outcome in the battle. They lied to him and they said, go ahead, the victory is yours. You're going to succeed. You're going to conquer. Go ahead. Zedekiah, who was one of Baal's false prophets, he put on a real show for Ahab. Hear me now. I said, he put on a real show. Yeah. Made himself some horns of iron. He must have done a real showboat. He would have made a good Hollywood actor today. He'd have made an excellent televangelist. Could have joined Benny Hinn over in Orlando. Two of them could have doubled their greedy game. He, Zedekiah, even used the name of the Lord in proclaiming his life. What does Zedekiah say? He said, thus says the Lord. With these horns of iron, you're going to go all those Arameans till they are consumed. Did you hear that? He lied in the name of the Lord. Zedekiah was one of those slick-tongued devils. What he was. He was a liar. He had a lying tongue that was led by a lying spirit. Be weary of those who are always running around and pouting, thus says the Lord. Okay? I can open this book up and I can say to you, thus says the Lord, <coughs> Jesus Christ is coming back. I can say that based on the authority of this word. But if I stand before you and I say, thus says the Lord, Jesus Christ is coming back on December the 17th at 2 a.m. on 2013. You better run from me like you would a rattlesnake. Because I'm lying. Because it's not in this book. Matter of fact, it contradicts everything this book says. Right. Right. No one knows. Not even Jesus. Be weary of those who tout. Thus says the Lord, who are getting these extra 
biblical revelations from voices. Those voices are none other than lying spirits. They can be intriguing, folks. They can be mesmerizing. They can be mystic. They can be arrogant. They can be hypnotic. They are slick tongue lying devils. False prophets are those who espouse a message that appeals to the fallen carnal nature. They promise you perfect health. They promise you all the wealth that your heart desires. They promise you great prosperity. They promise you signs, wonders, and direct revelation from God. And you'll sell them if ever hearing them exhort you to deny yourself and take up the cross. Quite to the contrary, their message is give self everything it wants. You can have it all. You can write your own ticket. You can have the best that the world has to offer. You can not only have victory, but you can live in luxury. Faith in a lie is what that is. Jesus warned us of how the last days would be characterized. He said that false Christ, false prophets, would give great signs and wonders that would deceive even the elect. Exactly. Hear what I'm saying to you. It's true. Mm -hmm. They said that deception would run rampant. The apostles warned of what the last days would be like. Paul said there would be lying spirits, seducing spirits, doctrines of devils, strong delusion. Wolves in sheep's clothing. Liars filled with the spirit of greedy gain. Ear ticklers with Messages that appeal to the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. That message, my friends, runs rampant in the modern day church era. Has even Southern Baptists buying into this line of spirit, folks? 